Twitter is trying to explain sudden changes in the number of followers for high profile accounts. Some users saw a big increase, some a massive drop, all one day after Twitter announced a deal with Elon Musk. Take former President Obama for, as an example. He's the most followed user on Twitter. He lost more than 300,000 of those followers. Pop star Katy Perry, the third most followed, she lost more than 200,000 followers. Some right-wing politicians got an increase. The Republican Congressman of Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene, gained 93,000 followers by last night. And the Brazilian leader, Bolsonaro, saw his follower count skyrocket. Oh, well, golly gee. Do you think perhaps, just maybe, it's because of all the conservatives who were banned in the past for daring to exercise that really rare thing today known as free speech have returned? Plus, you gotta, you gotta also include the people who just weren't necessarily banned, but left out of fear of being banned and now returned because Elon Musk brought free speech back to the platform. And the reason why so many leftists left Instagram is because they don't want free speech. If you're wondering why, it's because free speech, opinions and facts, scare them, so they left before they would see them. Now, Twitter did not release an exact number of accounts that were activated or shut down after the Musk takeover announcement, but a company spokesperson says, the fluctuations in follower counts came from what they call an organic increase. Of course it's organic, because the algorithm of fucking people over on purpose just because of what they believe in is no longer there. No more shadow banning and censoring and deleting comments and tweets and all that shit. That doesn't exist anymore, so of course it was organic. It wasn't organic before. Oh, and by the way, for the lesser minds who need it explained even further, that's the exact reason why a lot of conservative followers went up. Because you weren't able to find them before, and now you can. You own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates, all of its nominees. Or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else. And the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. Elon Musk says this is all to help people because he is just a free speech, philosophically clear, open-minded helper. Funny how they went from saying that anybody who says that is a conspiracy theorist. But now that Elon owns the website and is trying to bring free speech back, all of a sudden, the whole concept of turning down the reach on some people and turning up the reach on others is all of a sudden a true thing that Elon Musk can do can f to fuck over the left. Even though Twitter has literally been doing that and denying it, against conservatives for the past eight years. But, oh, I'm sorry, when it was actually a true thing against conservatives, it was a conspiracy theory. And now that it'll be untrue against supposedly the left, all of a sudden it'll be true so that you can excuse SJWs who've left the website out of fear or make Elon Musk look bad? Man, the desperation has actually grown to whole new levels. The reason should be obvious. They're getting so desperate now that they're even admitting what they've been doing the last eight years, but just flipping it over. <laughs> I think there's a bigger problem that when we focus on the personalities of people like Elon Musk and people say, oh, I think Elon's thinking this or that, there's a bigger problem here about how we are going to control the channels of communication in mm -hmm. this country. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? We gave over our, uh, what amounts to our airwaves or our internet waves to Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. And we are in so much trouble 
because those guys believe in making money. We've already seen that with the 2016 election mm. in Zuckerberg when he was taking rubles for ads from Russia and saying, oh, I think it's crazy to think they had any influence on this election. Mm. Musk is the same. Musk doesn't want it. Oh, you know, he's upset with the SEC, tried to, how dare they question him? You know what I'm saying? This is dangerous. We can't think anymore in this country. We don't have people, <laughs> no, I'm serious. We don't have people in Congress who can make regulations that can make it work. You need controls on this. You need regulation. You cannot let these guys control discourse in this country. <laughs> Where the fuck do I even start with this guy? First of all, thank you for blatantly admitting that you fear people's ability to free speech and speaking facts because now facts will be heard by people saying them and you no longer have control over who gives that information or how it's expressed to the world. Thank you for literally admitting <laughs> that big tech and the mainstream media literally controls the flow of information and the ability for free speech prevents you from controlling the flow of information. That was beautiful. Oh, and by the way, don't you just love how he's likening the ability to talk without censorship as us controlling information. I don't think you know what controlling information means. This is actually extremely similar to, I don't know if you guys remember, I'll give you a little bit of a refresher. Back when Parler came out, right? Parler was a free speech website alternative to big tech. So a lot of people, primarily conservatives, because they're the ones being censored mostly, they went to Parler and left sites like YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And when they did, not only did, did the mainstream media actually manage to get Parler shut down because free speech is so bad, but Brian Stelter was on CNN and he literally said that people who go to Parler are just right-wing extremists who need to stay in their echo chamber. Isn't that fucking funny? According to the mainstream media, the echo chamber is a website that allows all opinions even left-wing opinions, but Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram that only allows left-wing opinions is somehow not an echo chamber. <laughs> and just to finish up, you gotta find it really hilarious because there's all the SJWs who left Twitter because they're afraid of free speech and plan to go somewhere else. Where the fuck are you gonna go? Every single big tech website supports left-wing and SJW ideas. It was conservatives who required the alternative because they're the ones being censored. Therefore, you don't have an alternative with more censorship. <laughs> Good luck, idiots.